Hello viewers, welcome to the course on the agronomy and uh, in this the chapter we have studied the basic principle of crop production. And in the basic principle of crop production, earlier we have studied about the effect of the climate on the crop production, effect of the soil, different types of the soil which affects the crop production. And now in the continuity, we will study the preparation of the soil and the seeds. The preparation of the soil is the most important one because if the soil is compact as we have studied earlier that in the soil contains 25 percent of the air, 25 percent of the water and remaining 50 percent as the uh, parent material. But if the soil is compact then certainly this ratio may change and the air and the water may be affected by the compactness. Therefore, for production of any crop to get a high production, it is necessary to go for the tilting of the soil preparation. How we can improve the soil quality by doing the soil tilling and, uh, and for that purpose, uh, we can maintain the quality of the soil and this tilling and the plowing. This is the process of the loosening and the turning of the soil is called the tilling and the plowing. This is done by using a plow. Plow are made up of the wood or the iron. If the soil is very dry, it may need watering before the plowing. The plowed field may have big pieces of the soil called the crumbs. It is necessary to break these crumbs with the planks. The field is leveled for the sowing as well as for the irrigation purpose. The leveling of the soil is done with the help of the leveler. Sometimes manure is added to the soil before tilling. This helps in the proper mixing of the manure with the soil. The soil is watered before sowing. So, this is in general I am saying that how we can help this uh, uh, tilling and the plowing. Uh, but there are different uh, equipments which are required for tilling of the land for making the soil treatment. Before sowing the seed, it is very necessary that we should break the soil size of the grains to get the better yield. This is done with the help of the various tools. The main tools used for this process are plow, disc, hoe, harrow and cultivator. Now we see that these are the some of these I have mentioned the plow earlier in the earlier days the people they used to uh, plow with the help of the animals and uh, you can see here in the figure and then with the time of the change of the mechanization some uh, the tractor plows are available, tractor disc are plow attached to the disc, the disc uh, plow we are using for the breakdown of the soil then making the channels, their equipments are available and to break down the big size of the soil, the leveler are used for breakdown. So, these are the some of the equipments I have shown you here, how they work here and this is the one we can see that the soil, how this uh, cultivators can help in the tilling of the soil uh, that can be for the sowing purpose. Now, I just uh, why this uh, here I want to explain you about the plow. One should know because the type of the plow, how it works and what is the safe of so that you can make your own with the or you can guide the uh, iron smith man that how you can make the plow and for that purpose it is a big shaft. Plow shaft is there is a uh, made up of either the iron or it is from the wood and that is the and then the lower portion is known as the plow shear and this plow shear has a two part one is the apical portion the apex portion is made up of the iron. It contains the strong triangular iron strips called the plow shear. The main part of the plow is the long, uh, long log of the wood which is called the plow shaft. There is a handle at one end of the shaft, 
the other end is attached to the beam which is placed on the bull's neck one pair of the bulls and a man can easily operate the plow so this is a simple construction how it is made of the plow then we can have a hoe hoe is mainly used for making the weeding and also in between the crops we can make a the loosening of the soil and for that purpose how it is made up so it is a simple tool which is used for the removing all the weeds and for loosening of the soil it has a long rod of the wood or the iron a strong broad and the bent plate of the iron is fixed to the one of its end and works like a blade it is pulled by the animals or even for the uh, human beings can be used so most of the people they are using for in uh, for interculturing of the crops now cultivator the system is dynamic lot of mechanization has come in ag agriculture so these cultivators are attached to the tractor drawn and this tractor drawn they help they use the cultivators that is they are saving the labor and time also so they loosen the soil and helps in the improvement of the soil now we come to the sowing of the seed the sowing is the most important part of the crop production before sowing good quality of the seeds are selected as we have mentioned earlier that the we should first prepare the land and then go for the second step is the sowing and the in the sowing of the seed the selection of the seed is very important good quality seed are cleaned and healthy seeds of a good variety farmers prefer to use the seed which give a high yield before sowing one of the important task is to know about the tools used for the sowing of the seed as we have seen that what do we mean by the good quality of the seed because if you buy the seed from the market you see that there is a lot of variation in the seed the seed size may vary seed weight may vary so there is a requirement of the grading first we require that the seed should be graded well and then the best quality the best size of the seed should be used for the cultivation purpose nowadays because of the uh, high biotechnology uh, this uh, uh, the plant breeder they have developed the high yielding variety seed so if we use the good quality of the seed and high yielding variety seed then production can be more more and more then but yes this is the one part we are looking for the good quality but it's a how we can sow in the field so tools are more important for again here so we can see that the tools earlier days the people they used the handmade and the uh, this a uh, traditional tool that tool used the traditionally for sowing of the seed is shaped like a funnel it is a funnel is attached with the plow with the bullock cart and then the seed are put in the funnel so it is not giving a uniform depth sometimes uh, the seed go very deep sometimes the seed can be on the upper side so but uh, anyhow at that time it was only the equipment earlier we were using that one and then nowadays the seed drills are developed and these seed drills is used for sowing with the help of the tractor the tool sows the seed uniform at the proper distance and the depth here these seed drills they can be changed according to the need if suppose a plant some variety they can be sown at the 45 cm distance some crops they required only 30 cm distance uh, for in between lines so these seed drills can be adjusted accordingly so this is the advantage we have by this one it ensures the seed get the covered by the soil after sowing this prevent the damage caused by the birds sowing by the using a seed drill save time and the labor this is the advantage of the seed drill seed and sowing now the most we talk about the land preparation the equipment used for the sowing of the seed but first we should know what is the seed the seed is fertilized ovule consisting of intact embryo stored food endosperm and seed coat which is viable and has got the capacity to germinate this is the one major definition of the seed but sometimes some crops like cuttings of the plants can be used 
some buds of the plants can be used. So, the another definition is that the seed is any material used for planting and propagation whether it is in the form of the seed grain of the food fodder fiber or vegetable crops or seedlings tubers, bulb, rhizomes, roots, cuttings, grafts or other vegetatively propagated materials. So, one should not confuse that the seed means only your uh, the seed endosperm and all that that is one. Now, we see that before treatment of the seed, I just want to tell you that there are two types of the seed. One is the orthodox which are the normal one, they can be maintained, you can keep it for a long time but there are some calcitrant seed. These seeds are or very sensitive one like coconut, the seed is embedded in the water, coconut water. If you just remove that one, that seed will not germinate. That is why it is the most important that one we should see that the which type of the seed we are using. The calcitrant seeds are directly used as a, along with the fruits you can grow in the field. Now, the we should see the orthodox seeds which are required to be treatment. Calcitrant seeds do not require, they can directly put uh, along with the fruits. So, seed treatment it is process of the application of the chemicals or the protectant means most of the times seeds are infected with the fungi or some insects and before sowing if we treat them then probably the problem of pest can be overcome. So, these are some of the different uh, treatments they like the fungicidal, insecticidal, bactericidal, nematocidal the seeds that prevent the carries of the insect or pathogens in or on the seeds. Now, as I told you earlier that the grading is the most important and these are some graders I am showing you that uh, you can just according to the uh, type of the crops, th you can change the sieve so that uh, you can have a uniform seeds from this one. So, these uh, grading machines is the common, it is a thresher and uh, shakers only uh, and then blower also. So, light the uh, some other particles they can be blown out and then the with the help of the different sieves you can use the uh, three types of the one is the good quality then medium type of the and then the waste material is coming down one. So, you can grade the seed by the seed grader. Now, once you clean or develop a good quality of the seed then the next come the germination. Germination is the most important. If you have a 100 percent or 80 percent germination, your population will be good. So, for the germination of the any plant, any seed, the some of the most important character external factors and there are the internal factors. In the external factors like the moisture, like temperature, oxygen, light and substratum of the soil is the important. And internal factors like food, oxygen, viability and dormancy. You see that generally you might have studied in your uh, during your school education seed germination. If you put the seed on the plane uh, on the air without any uh, soil and the water they will not germinate. If you keep it directly and keep it in a dark some seeds germinate, some seeds they do not germinate. So, light has an important role at that time. So, moisture is the most important, without moisture they will not germinate. If you put a water then the soil they will germinate. Temperature, if you keep your seed in a freeze, they will not germinate. Though you have a moisture, you have a light and everything, but they will not germinate. Uh, so, every seed having a different type of the temperature required in general it is 25 to 27 degree temperature is required. Then the your soil types which already we have discussed which type of the soil is required. Then internal factor if your seed is not well developed the endosperm is poor food then the seed will not germinate or if at all germinate the growth will be very poor. Then another point is the viability. Sometimes we see that the 
some seeds when we put uh, uh, for uh, immediately germination they will germinate but sometimes uh, if you keep it for a 10 days or 20 days or maybe for uh, one month they will not germinate because their viability lost and most of the oil seed plants they lose the viability within a short period so it is the viability is the most important before uh, sowing of the seed you must check the viability and the uh, dormancy of the seed. Now the seed dormancy, because though the seed is well matured, but if you keep it in your with the, all the providing the moisture and uh, light and uh, oxygen all the uh, external factors even though the seed will not germinate. What is the reason behind it? We should see that some of the seeds have a hard seed coat dormancy. So, that required a, this a stratification means some chemical treatment, maybe sulfuric acid treatment, maybe with the help of the boiling water treatment, maybe some uh, you just uh, rub it and then break the hard seed coat dormancy. So, and then immediately they will absorb the water and they will germinate that. But there are some plants which uh, even though uh, you provide all the scarification and all the things they will not germinate, but they require some time means maybe some low temperature you have to keep it for some times so that your embryo can mature and so this is way that the seed has a dormancy. So, failure of the fully developed and the mature viable seed to germinate under favorable conditions of the moisture and temperature is called the resting stage or dormancy and the seed is said to be the dormant. This is the definition of the dormancy. I have already explained you and dormancy, the primary dormancy is the seed which are capable of germination just after ripening even by providing all the favorable conditions are said to be have primary dormancy. The secondary dormancy, some seeds are capable of germination under the favorable conditions just after ripening, but when these seeds are stored under the unfavorable conditions even for a few days they become a incapable of germination. So, this is a definition. Then causes of the dormancy as we have discussed just now the hard seed coat dormancy that hard seed coat will not permit to enter the water inside. So, so seed will not imbibe. So, they fail to germinate and then rudimentary second point is the rudimentary embryo of the seed. The embryo is not fully matured and it takes some time to mature uh, when you store it. So, and then it uh, fully ripened and it will germinate. Then dormant embryo sometimes what we have seen that the embryo is matured, but even though they will not germinate because they require uh, some chilling treatment. So, this is the dormant embryo can be germinated. Then synthesis and accumulation of the germination inhibitors in the seed. Sometimes embryo is well developed, seed is not hard seed coated even though they will not germinate. What is the problem then? It may some contain some of the growth hormones which affect the germination and for that uh, the plant organs synthesize some chemical compounds which are accumulated in the seed at the maturity and these chemicals inhibit the germination of their seed. So, what required for their germination? So, they have to keep in water for uh, some times so that these chemical can be come out in the water diluted in the water and can be germinate easily. So, this is the method of such type of the treatment. Now, I am just giving one the example of this one, all matured seeds we have kept for the germination, but some seeds they germinate, some seeds they imbibe, but they have not germinated and the third type of the seed they have not imbibed and uh, so what is the problem in it? Those seeds which are fully having a matured embryo, the water is imbibed, so that is why have they have germinated. But the second blot you see that they imbibe, but the embryo is not fully developed. So, that is why they fail to germinate and in the third type of the, the seed coat is hard. So, water is not going inside that is why they are not imbibed. 
So, this is the figure you can understand. Once we see that the seed a uh, good quality, we have discussed about the dormancy. Now, we see that the seed testing is the most important. If your seed having a 80 percent germination, then we call it say seed is good, the growth is good. If the poor seed, the growth will be very poor and germination will be less. So, for testing of this, how you can see that the seed is good? For that purpose, the following tests are conducted to determine the quality of the seed. These are purity test, then germination or seed viability test and moisture content test. The purity test, purity denotes the percentage of the seed by weight belongs to the variety under the certification. How we can see that purity percentage is the weight of the pure seed divided by the total weight of the working sample multiplied by the 100. This is a simple formula. Then seed viability or the germination test. This can be determined as percentage of the seed that produce or are likely to produce the seedlings under a suitable environment. The two tests most commonly used for the determination of the seed viability are germination test and tetrazonium test. You see that immediately for germination you keep in a patter plates and you can see that how much the seed you are keeping for the germination seed cap and how much the seed is germinated multiply by the 100. So, this is simple germination test, but the quick method is that there is one chemical tetrazonium chloride. It determines the percentage of the viable seed which may be expected to germinate the chemical 235 tetrazonium chloride in short Tz, it is called as a Tz test. It is colorless, but once if you take the seed, divide into half, cut it into two parts and then keep it in your Tz uh, tetrazonium chloride, then you see that the embryo will be colored, it will be red or lighter uh, red in color. So, that indicate if your embryo is red, it shows that your seed is viable. If it remains as a white, then you can call it say non viable seed. So, this is the simple method. So, seeds are soaked in the tap water overnight and are split longitudinally with the help of a scalpel to that of a portion of the embryo is attached with this such half of the seed. One half of the seed is placed in the petri dish cover with the 1 percent aqueous solution of the Tz tetrazonium chloride. For 4 hours, the seed are then washed in tap water and um, the number of the seed in which the embryo is strained red is determined. So, this is a simple Tz test and you can see the viability percentage you can find out. Now, the real value of the seed. Sometimes, it is a percentage of the seed sample that would produce the seedling of the variety under the certification. This is also known as the utility percentage of the seed and is a function of the purity P and the germination G. So, it is simple percentage uh, real value is equal to P into G divided by 100. Then moisture content because your storage of the seed is most important. If your seed contains more moisture, then it will be spoiled. So, it uh, remain 10 to 15 percent of the moisture is required and therefore, the seed moisture is important. So, we can just see that the seed W 1 minus W 2, you take the seed, dry it up and divided by the what is the initial moisture or the weight of the uh, seed and multiply by the 100, you can find out the moisture content of the seed. Now, once we find the seed viability, seed dormancy, now we come to the seed rate. How much the seed is required to grow uh, in a 1 hectare area or in your uh, given area? So, the seed rate per unit area depends on the germination of the seed, size of the seed, growing habit of the crops, the sowing, uh, this is the one. If your seed is a small, then the quantity of the seed is required less. If your seed is bigger in size, you required more seed. This is the one is uh, important point we have to see it. Then sowing time, 
time is the most important it has non monetary input which greatly influence the crop growth and yield therefore sowing of the crop should be done at a recommended dates because sometimes the rabi crop seed if you grow in the kharif they will not germinate so that is the time is the important one where the temperature and moisture is required then depth of sowing as we have seen the size of the seed so if your seed is very small in size it means it doesn't require very deep in the soil if you go very deep in the sowing period then it will not germinate or if at all germinate then the population will be low and if your seed is uh, bigger in size it can be sown in the deeper in the soil so it is a non monetary again input which decide the plant stand in the field it influence the germination and emergence of the seed sowing should be done at the recommended depth these vary with the kind of the seed and its size because seed may be sown at a greater depth while the smaller size seed at a shallow seeds should be dropped in the moist zone so this is the simple we have seen now the spacing and plant population if your seed we have to maintain the population in the field if we take the more seed suppose the we have recommended is the 3 kg per hectare of any crop and if we take the 5 kg of the seed in a given area then the population will be more and if population is more then there is a more competition and there is the no development the poor development of the crops so therefore uh, we have to keep uh, the spacing and the plant population as you can see here in the figure that how these three crops are kept in a proper distance and proper population the row to row distance and plant to plant distance and for some of the example for, uh, we have given that how much the seed length is required for bajra it is say 1.37 to 1.5 lakhs plant is required 45 to 15 centimeter spacing is to be so in this way we have given the different for uh, spacing and this one then sowing method now how we can go for the there are different methods of the sowing like broadcast earlier days the people uh, just they broadcast the seed and then they would do the follow the soil working so in that case the half of the seed uh, remain in the soil and the it will not germinate so that's why the broadcasting though it is a very easy method unskilled men can do it but labor requirement is low but the germination is poor seed rate is uh, required more because the pop to maintain the population so this is the advantage and disadvantage i just uh, i have given you that uh, quickest method but it is a uh, more uh, seed is required its skilled labor is not uniform implement is not required uh, and followed in the most condition and disadvantage here the seed uh, requirement is more crop stand is not uniform because they are not comes in the new results in the gappy germination and the defective wherever the adequate moisture is not present in the soil the spacing is not maintained so this is the disadvantage now you can see the uh, photographs here method of sowing broadcasting simply man is just broadcasting the seed then second one the line sowing if you with the help of that uh, tillage you can have a maintain the proper spacing and the lining and then the third one is the dibbling some of the seeds which can be required are dibbling of the and some of the crops they required also transplanting so drilling or the line sowing in the picture we have seen that it is the dropping of the seed into the soil with the help of the implements such as the moga seed drill seed cum fertilizer driller or the mechanical seed driller and then the seeds are covered by the wooden planks this is the simple one the advantage the seeds are placed at a proper and uniform depth along the rows the interculturing can be done uniform row to row spacing is maintained seed requirement is less than the broadcasting sowing is done at a proper moisture level disadvantage what is there the required implements for the sowing vapsa condition is must and then plant to plant inter row spacing is not maintained then skilled person is required for the sowing dibbling it is the placing or the dibbling of the seeds at a cross marks made in the field with the help of the marker as per the requirement of the crop in both the direction it is done 
manually by the dibbler. This method is followed in crops like groundnut, castor, hybrid cotton which are having bold size and the high value seeds. And then transplanting, some of the crops which raised in the nursery and the raised nursery plants are transplanted in the field like rice it can be transplanted in the field. So, this is the simple I have mentioned how we can do it in a irrigated condition. Now, the transplanting you can see the photographs the rice transplanting and some of the like chilies, brinjal they are the planting some seedlings raised in the nursery and planted and then sowing behind the plough which is by the seed we can do it. Then planting, it is the place of the vegetative part of the crops which are vegetatively propagated in the laid out field, tubers or potato, mother sets of the ginger, these are the some of the example. Putting seeds behind the plough, it is the dropping of the seed behind the plough in the furrow with the help of the manual labor or uh, by the hand. This method is followed by the crops like wall or the gram in this some areas for better utilization of the soil moisture. The seeds are covered by the successive furrow opened by the plough. This method is not commonly followed for the sowing of the crops. Viewers, we have discussed the two main points. One is the soil working and another is the seed quality and seed sowing methods. In the soil quality, the soil working, we have why it is very important that uh, to loosen the soil, if the soil is uh, well ploughed, then the germination and the growth of the crop will be very good and some equipments we have already discussed. Then we come to the seed. Seed is a very important aspect. If the crop variety is good, the seed quality is good, then your crop production will be much better. As we have seen also in the photographs that some of the seeds they germinate, some of the seeds they do not germinate, means that they are the viability is poor, maybe they, are, they have a hard seed coat dormancy, they are not fully imbibed. So, seed is the very important one. Then the seed. Uh, before sowing, we must be well aware the quality of the seed whether they are the viable or not. So, different methods we have shown the chemical methods and the germination method. Then we have also studied the germination the sowing procedure that how we can sow you have a good quality of the seed, but if it is not properly sown uh, or timely sown then they may be a problem. So, line sowing we have sown and the then broadcasting all the different methods uh, dif we have discussed, but uh, ultimately our main objective that we must have a maximum crop production by the seed quality and the soil working.